Hello, and welcome back to another video. This is the fourth episode of story in which Naruto and Shikamaru were the only survivors of the fourth war. Kurama, seeing them fade, sent them back to the Jinan days to prevent the war. Make sure to click the like and subscribe buttons. Now let's begin, everyone is calling you to the red demon twins. The son Daime started with amusement in his voice making Akira grin, he finally followed his parents in the line of nicknames. I thank you for helping out during the invasion and for keeping our beautiful village safe. The son Daime went on to say before he looked at the Jounin senseis in the room. We heard that you helped out our team's Akira. Kur and I looked at the one with a braid, being able to tell the difference thanks to the reports team guy, 8 and 7 gave. I couldn't let them die, Akira said honestly. Guy was beaming at him and Kakashi was inspecting him with a single critical eye. Thank you for saving our youthful students Akira-san. Guy gave the redhead a thumb up and Akira returned it with one of his own. Akito, you not only helped us out. Inoiki started at the nod he got from the San Daime. You also got glowing praise from our children and the children of the late Yondaime Kaze Kage. We thank you for saving them. I didn't do much, I just worked alongside all their powers, Akito said modestly as he took the compliment. Now that you have all buttered us up, why don't we get down to the real reason why we are here? Akira looked at Hiruzen who nodded at the statement. You can imagine the questions we may have after you two appeared out of nowhere with details of Orochimaru's plans and having set plans of your own to counter them. The San Daime started as he laced his fingers together, staring down the two redheads who looked unaffected. However any questions of it being a ploy disappeared when you helped my Anbu squad successfully destroy Orochimaru and then went on to help the village against the invading force. Now we have other questions that need to be answered. Did you make sure every single scroll was burnt and not taken away to be studied at a later point? Akito spoke up his eyes hardening at the mere idea of a root member taking it to Donzo. I made sure to count and burn them all myself. Anko then came and reported that her curse seal that is linked to Orochimaru himself has vanished meaning that he is dead. The son Daime assured the redhead who fell back against the couch looking relieved at the information. Good, if even one of the scrolls had fallen into the wrong hands. Orochimaru would have been able to return and who knows what other destruction would have followed behind that, Akito said. His hidden bases will need to be thoroughly destroyed after this is said and done. The redhead's voice taking on his Anbu commander tone out of reflex and he noticed Kakashi and Shikaku stiffen up out of habit. It will be done, but for now if you would be so kind to answer our questions? Hiruzen asked in a grandfatherly way, but his voice had a steel tone in it reminding the newcomers that he was still dangerous. Fire away! Akira made a shooting motion with his thumb and index finger. You two are Akira and Akito Kazama. The son Daime started and the duo nodded. You say you are allies of Konoha, but you knew details of Orochimaru's plans before the invasion ever came to pass. How? I shall start at the beginning, otherwise it would not make sense. Akira crossed his long legs on the couch to get comfortable. Akito grumbled as his twin's legs whacked him and edged away much to the amusement of the Jounins in the room. Please go ahead. Hiruzen nodded his agreement. We do not belong to any village, we were born on the road and we grew up on the road. We passed through many different villages and were taught by many ninjas in the ways of ninjutsu, daijutsu, kenjutsu, jinjutsu, weapons and battle strategy. Our family has different blood and churka than others do. We have blood of seers, we are able to see a certain amount of time into the future when it is needed. We heard of the Chunin exams taking place in Konoha so we decided it would be interesting to come and see the village and the skills showcased. That is when we were shown a vision. Akira explained trailing off to let Akito take over, as he was not sure he could recount what happened to the San Daime. Our vision was of Orochimaru invading Konoha with Ado and Suna, as he killed the Yondaime Kaze Kage and used his face to influence Suna into attacking the leaf. In the vision we saw, the Sound 4 would erect a barrier and Orochimaru would reanimate the corpses of the Shodai and Nidaim Hokages and at the end of the battle the San Daime Hokage would be dead, Akito said emotionlessly. Thus making this the first event in the fourth shinobi war that will destroy everyone and everything. We simply took out the sound four before the final round of the tuning exams and replaced them with injured bunshines. So when the time came we could stop Orochimaru's plans in its tracks. Akira tacked on before the two redheads sat back and let the new information sink in. The office was silent as each ninja processed the information in different ways. However thanks to your efforts, that fate has been avoided. The San Daime broke the silence. Yes, but as horrible as it is to say. Your death opened the way for an amazing god I'm to step up. Akira swallowed. Who? Hiruzen asked curiously. Tsunade sent you. Akito informed them. Tsunade? God I'm? Jiraiya gapped at the two redheads who just nodded. 
we have seen her do amazing things for the village, Akira said honestly, he wasn't even lying at this point, Sunadia was exactly what the village needed. I was thinking after everything that happened today, it is high time for me to retire, Hiruzen laughed, waving off looks he was getting from the others in the room. So. You believe us? Akira couldn't help, but let some of his emotions through in his words. Yes I do. The San Daime nodded and slowly the others in the room agreed with him. Arigato. The two bowed their heads smiles on their lips. Why, don't you two go get some sleep, after all you two fought hard today? The San Daime said kindly. Kakashi will escort you two to a room here until arrangements can be made. Hi, Arigato Hokage-sama. The redheads bowed as they pulled themselves off the couch and followed after Kakashi who was already heading out the door. Thank you Kakashi-san. Akira nodded his head at the silver-haired Jounin. Ma, Kakashi is fine. I should be thanking you, part of that group you saved was my kawaii Jinan team. Kakashi gave them an eye smile as he opened a door to a basic room that housed a desk and two twin beds. It was no problem. Akira rubbed his head laughing slightly, Kakashi blinked at the familiar gesture, Naruto and Minato did the exact same thing. This only served to make the copy nin more curious and now he had the perfect excuse to get to know the twins better. If it's not too much trouble could you two come and train with us? I think it would serve them well to see true teamwork in action. Kakashi asked Akira blink taken back at the request. We would be honored Kakashi. Akito spoke up and Kakashi nodded his head and left the twins to their new room. Holy shit, that just happened, Akira exclaimed as he fell onto a bed while Akito sat on the other one. We need to change back and get some solid rest. We can talk about all this later, I think we've done enough for now. Akito put his twin back on track. Right, right. Akira pulled himself off the bed and made a hand sign. Two bunshines appeared beside the twins and the original twins quickly hunched into birds and the duo flew out the open window. The birds flew around the village and spotted their Jinan bunshines working together a little bit away from the others as they helped to clear the streets of rubble. The birds let out high-pitched cooing and the two Jinans walked around the corner and out of sight of anyone. The birds landed and lifted their hinges as the two Jinans puffed away and the original Naruto and Shikamaru staggered back as the Bunshine's memories hit them along with their exhaustion. Damn, I'm even more exhausted than before. Naruto groaned as the two went back to work. I feel like I could sleep for a solid month. Seems like Akira and Akito were a hit among the Jinan, Shikamaru whispered to the blonde. Oh god I think Sakura and Dino have crushes on us, who would have thought? Oh great Sasuke hates Akira. This should be a good time, Naruto laughed before he looked down at his hands and frowned as he noticed they were trembling. Naruto looked up at Shikamaru and saw the Naruto was swaying dangerously and body shaking like a leaf. Shika. Naruto took a step towards the swaying Jinan, but instead he found the world tilting on a slant. Whoa there. A voice called out as arms wrapped around Naruto's waist, keeping him propped against the owner of the arms. Naruto glanced up and saw Asuma was heaving his student into his arms and the Nara had his eyes closed clearly having passed out. Naruto squirmed in the arms that held him trying to get to Shikamaru to make sure he was alright, but the arms just tightened. Relax Naruto-chan, it's over. Kakashi's voice soothed the blonde as he adjusted his hold on his student, shifting him so he was holding the blonde the same way Asuma was holding Shikamaru. You two have been through a lot today, we'll bring you to Yoshino-chan. Kakashi nodded at Asuma. You have no idea. Naruto thought to himself as Kakashi and Asuma left roof to roof heading towards the Nara compound with their students in tow. Kakashi and Asuma kept glanced down at their charges as they traveled. Shikamaru was already out of it and Naruto tipped over the edge as the group landed by the front door of the Nara compound. Asuma kicked at the door a couple of times and it flew open to reveal an upset Yoshino Nara waiting there. Oh my god. Are they okay? Bring them this way. Yoshino hurried down the hall with the Jounins trailing behind her. Yoshino opened the door to Shikamaru's room and went about readying the bed for the Jinans. They are just exhausted Yoshino-chan, nothing good food and bed rest won't cure. Asuma assured the women as he placed Shikamaru down on the bed, removing the Jinan shoes and grey blood-stained jacket. Kakashi laid Naruto next to the slumbering Nara, removing the blonde's shoes and hit I-8. The two Jinans curled towards each other subconsciously, both sleeping peacefully. Naruto's hand moved slightly and curled protectively around Shikamaru's previously injured wrist as the two slept on. Tell me what happened out there right now. Yoshino turned on the two Jounins the moment she slid the door shut. Asuma and Kakashi took turns explaining what happened during the exams and the following invasion. I am glad they are safe. Yoshino sat down in a chair in the dining hall with a heavy sigh. I'm restricting them to bed rest. 
again blasted troublemakers. She grumbled while Asuma laughed slightly and Kakashi gave an eye smile. The trio startled suddenly when a muffled shout and a thud came from Shikamaru's room. The three were racing towards the room and Asuma slid open the door before the three stopped to take in the scene before them. Naruto was still on the bed, but he was now sitting up with his knees drawn up to his chest. His head was hanging down on his chest and his fingers were tightly gripping his blonde locks while he shook and muttered to himself. Shikamaru was leaning heavily against the wall across from the bed with his long black hair hanging over his shoulders shielding his face. His whole body was shaking as well and his right hand was making the motion of flicking on and off a lighter one that Asuma was very familiar with, but was confused as to why Shikamaru was mirroring the motion like he had been doing it all his life. Go. Yoshino pushed the two, Jounin's knowing that this time she needed to step down gracefully as she left the senseis to deal with their students. Kakashi sat on the bed in front of Naruto and ever so gently placed his hands on Naruto's own, pulling them out of the mess of blonde hair. Naruchan? Kakashi whispered and was met with sky blue eyes so full of raw sorrow and sadness that it hurt Kakashi's heart just to see his Janan's eyes. Kashi ni san? Naruto whispered his eyes widening. I'm right here Naruchan. Kakashi said smoothly internally wondering at the nickname and if Naruto knew of his connect to his parents all thoughts fled his mind as he stiffened up when then blonde Janan reached out and traced his nose through the mask and swiftly lifted the forehead protector to reveal the long scar and the Sharingan. Naruto ran his fingertips down the scar before he smiled relieved, his eyes shut and he slumped against the wall behind the bed unconscious. Kakashi frowned confused, but he tucked his Janan back in bed and sat on the floor next to the sleeping blonde to keep watch. Asuma stood in front of Shikamaru and placed his hand over Shikamaru's moving one. Shikamaru, are you awake? Asuma inquired. Asuma? Shikamaru's eyes turned upwards and Asuma swallowed at the sadness and heartbreak he saw in the narrow brown eyes. Suddenly Shikamaru's hands were patting down Asuma's stomach and the side of his bearded face, relief showed in his eyes as he slumped against the wall and slid down it. You're alive, Shikamaru whispered happily before his eyes closed and he slumped to the side. Hands lying up by his face his fingers curled up slightly with strands of black hair splayed over his face. Asuma blew out a puff of air confused before he picked up the slumbering preteen and placed him back on the bed beside the sleeping blonde and the two Jounins watched amazed as the two curled towards each other once more and their hands gripped the other's forearms protectively. What just happened? Asuma looked at Kakashi who was still sitting by the side of the bed. I suppose the stress of the invasion today got to them. They must not have known if we were alive or not for the whole time they were fighting. They are only 12 and this was the first time they truly saw battle and death of this scale. Shikaku theorized from his place in the doorway, he had come in when the two Jounins were tending to their Janans. That makes sense. Asuma rubbed his neck, not making eye contact with Shikaku and Kakashi hummed his agreement to the Nara's theory. If you two have the time, Yoshino-chan is making some food. Shikaku offered before he walked out of view. We haven't eaten all day. Kakashi glanced at Naruto and Shikamaru once more before moving to follow the Nara, Asuma did the same before he followed the silver-haired Janan out of the room making sure to shut the door behind him. A week has passed by and only now were Shikamaru and Naruto allowed to leave the compound to help out in the village. However it seemed for not because thanks to the actions of the Red Demon twins there was minimal damage to the buildings in the village. Naruto walked along the streets with his head held high every time he heard a whisper about the Red Demon Twins while Shikamaru had a proud smirk on his lips. Apparently the twin redheads had made quite the impression on the village and many were interested in seeing them again, none more so than the Janan teams. On occasion people could spot two red blurs passing through the streets, Naruto and Shikamaru had ordered their bunshines to appear in the village every once in a while as they both now had their Konoha headbands thanks to the Sondaime. Akira had his tied to his forehead under his red bangs and Akito had his sewn into his left upper arm sleeve much like Naruto and Shikamaru wore theirs. The two Janan knew that had to tread more carefully around Shikaku from here on out, the older Nara seemed to be getting these knowing looks in his eyes whenever he spoke to the two or when Akira and Akito were brought up. One early morning when the two Janans were quietly discussing what they were going to do when Jiraiya came to get Naruto to bring Tsunade back to the village when two birds pecked at the window until Naruto lumbered up and let the birds in. The two birds then disappeared in a puff of smoke to show Akira and Akito Kazama. Kakashi wants us to come train with Team 7 in two hours, we figured that you two would rather be present for it, Akito whispered and the two Janans exchanged grins and the four of them made hand signs and their positions reversed. Now Naruto and Shikamaru were Akira and Akito once again while the Bunshines took the Janans places. See you at 9. 
Akira nodded at Naruto before the two redheads hedged into birds again and flew off to the apartment the Sundaime set the Kazama twins up and once the cleanup of the village was complete. Once inside the redheads dropped the henge and Akito walked into the kitchen, pulling his shoulder length hair up into his ponytail before he started on some breakfast for the two of them. Akira sat on the hardwood flooring with his legs crossed, placing a basic katana across his lap. He had left Raijin with his bunshine self for the training he had today. What do you think we should work on with Team 7? Akira asked as he polished his katana lovingly. Teamwork comes to mind. Akito retorted as he turned on the stove to heat up a frying pan. Ha ha, other than the obvious. Akira rolled his eyes. We show them real teamwork and point out the flaws in theirs. We should get Sakura working on her taijutsu, if she had a basic understanding it would make Tsunade's job of teaching her a bit easier. Akito mused as he cracked open some eggs from the fridge and into the heated pan. I can train Naruto and Kenjutsu so he can have a good excuse to wield Raijin so well in the future. Akira used air quotes when referring to himself. What about Sasuke? Akito asked, peering over his shoulder to see Akira screwing up his face. Maybe Kakashi can get him started on some more advanced Katanjutsus and work on his speed. I did notice that he was a bit slow when I saved them from the Adonin, but mainly we need to focus on his attitude and thankfully we can tell him what we think of him his goals and his skills by pretending we had a friend just like him and we can tell him what happened to this friend in the future. Akira slammed his open palm against the floor beside his thigh to give his point more impact. Hmm, so there is nothing in those plans that will make you feel better afterwards, huh? Akito teased as he scrambled the large pan of eggs. No ulterior motive at all, Akira said innocently before he placed his polished and sharpened katana on the coffee table as he moved about the kitchen bringing out plates and reheating some sausages. The two ate in peace and were armed and ready at nine, surprised that Kakashi came on time when the silver-haired Jounin knocked on the front door. I'll be damned. Akira huffed to himself as Akito opened the door to reveal the Jounin. Yo! He raised a hand in greeting. Are you two ready? Yeah. The twins chorused and followed Kakashi out of the apartment complex they were living in. Thank you for doing this, but you may be regretting it by the end of the day, Kakashi said, his ever-present orange book out already. Why would we regret it? Akira asked the two redheads were subconsciously flanking the copy nin as they had done so many a times in the future. My kawaii nods. They are not exactly what you would call the ideal team. Like I said before I think letting them see how teamwork actually works would be helpful. Kakashi scratched his eye as they came into view of the bridge where they could see Sasuke, Sakura and Naruto already lounging there. Akira smiled a bit seeing that Naruto had Raijin attached to his back that would make things easier during their training. Kakashi sensei. You are actually on time, Sakura said in shock before she glanced at the two redheads beside him and her cheeks turned the color of her hair. Sasuke's eyes narrowed at the two newcomers, but interest was sparked within his onyx eyes. Akira? You're one of the guest instructors Kakashi Sensei was talking about? Naruto beamed at the twins, Akira smiled and placed his hand on Naruto's blonde hair once again. That we are Kit, today we are going to help Kakashi here train you, Akira agreed trying not to think too hard about how he was Naruto in disguise while the version of himself in front of him was a bunshine, but it was still him. His head hurt just from thinking up this plan in the first place much to Shikamaru slash Akito's amusement. Akira and Akito Kazama Mijin on Team 7, Naruto Uzumaki, Sakura Haruno, and Sasuke Uchiha. Kakashi waved his free hand at each Shinan as he said their names. Akira waved cheerfully while Akito nodded slightly crossing his arms. Is it true that you sliced off the snake Sanin's tongue? Sakura asked in a small voice looking at Akira. It was creepy. Akira deadpanned and Akito snorted at the answer. What makes you think we want you to train us? Sasuke snapped. Akito heard Kakashi heave an almost silent sigh when the Uchiha spoke and the redhead noticed his twin's eyebrow twitch and then Akira became a red blur. Suddenly Sasuke's arm was twisted harshly up behind his back and the dull side of Akira's katana was pressed tightly against the Uchiha's pale, exposed throat. It not about what you want. It's about what you need if you are to survive in this world, Akira hissed before he released the raven haired Jinan and the redhead went back to his spot flanking Kakashi. We are here because we were asked to be, but we did not have to agree. We are going to help you all grow stronger in your own ways and most of all you three will learn teamwork, Akito said in his Anbu commander tone of voice, smirking as Sakura and Naruto straightened their backs and met his gaze head on. Sasuke was rubbing his wrist with a scowl etched on his face as he glared hatefully at Akira. All right. Go warm up and then we will hold spars. Akira ordered, with Kakashi nodding along the three Shinans went off towards training ground 7 and started to warm up. Was that too much? 
Akira looked at Kakashi. No, Sasuke needed to be put in his place. Kakashi rubbed his neck. You two aren't going to go easy on them are you? Now where would the fun in that be? Akira asked innocently before he grabbed Akito by his wrist, dragging him to the training ground to warm up as well. Tilda slash Tilda alright. Akira clapped his hands together looking down at the three Janans. My brother and myself are going to spar first. He smiled when he heard a groan of complaint from Naruto at those words. I want you each to pay close attention. Akito made strong eye contact with each Janan before the twins walked a bit away from the gathered Team 7 and then a few feet away from each other. Taijutsu and Kenjutsu only okay bro? Akira called out and Akito nodded. He knew what Akira was thinking, their usual fighting style would be a dead giveaway and they didn't want to use any elemental jutsus just yet. Also Sasuke and Kakashi's Sharingan made them feel unnerved using any jutsus they created. Begin. Kakashi called out after the two redheads looked at him expectantly. The Janans were expecting two blurs of red to appear where the twins had stood, but they were mistaken. Akira and Akito clearly had slowed down their moves so the Janans could watch. Akira lashed out with a kick from his right foot, pivoting on his left. Akito blocked with his forearm before twisting his wrist latching his fingers on Akira's ankle and with his arm he pushed forward the heel of his hand catching his twin with it in the chest while releasing Akira's ankle and his brother skidded back thanks to the force. Akira grinned like the fox he was and launched forward and the two exchanged blows, each harder and better executed than the last. The Janans watched in awe as the two slowly became red blurs, Sasuke had his Sharingan on to keep up with their speed. Let's take it up a notch shall we brother? Akira tilted his head to the side as the two stood across from each other, neither looking bothered by the fight they just had. So kind of you to ask, I was getting rather bored with our warm up, Akito agreed and as he pulled on his trench knives and while Akira pulled out his katana. That was a warm up? Sakura whispered in awe while Naruto bounced on his heels, his eyes trained on the two redheads. With nothing, but a smirk the two launched at each other. The blurs paused midair to show that Akito was bearing down on Akira from above with his trench knives pushing down on the katana. The twins' faces was taunt with concentration, but their eyes were lit with excitement. The two moved once again and the next time they could be spotted at normal speed their positions were reversed. Akira had his katana blade inches away from his twin's neck, but not touching the skin as Akito had maneuvered the long ends of his trench knives between the blade and his throat. The two disappeared in blurs of red before they stopped and a small dust cloud flew out from around their feet. Akira had his katana pressed to Akito's jugular while Akito had both his knives pressed to either side of Akira's neck. The two locked eyes before without a sound the two jumped back and bowed to the other. Good spar bro. Akira grinned as he placed his katana back on his waist. It was a good workout actually, Akito agreed as he reattached his trench knives to his belt. That was rather impressive handling of your weapons, Kakashi said as Team 7 approached the two redheads. I would very much like to see Akito take on Asuma with his trench knives and I'm sure Hayate would like to duel you Akira. That would be the day. Akira muttered to himself, Akito elbowed him. One thing at a time Kakashi. Akito smiled. Right now we are going to train your students. So, what did you three learn from our fight? You're really fast. Naruto deadpanned. Well that is true. Akito laughed while Akira beamed at the blonde. Sakura? Well. Akito you seem to make sure your right shoulder and left hip were guarded well while Akira seemed to make sure no blows hit just above his heart. You both seem to know this and made sure to avoid hitting those areas if at all possible. Sakura observed. Brilliant Sakura. Akira clapped his hands together with a grin as she flushed and smiled happily back at him. You are right, those places are tender for us as they house scars and pain from near fatal wounds. If you have a weakness like this you need to adjust your fighting around it so the enemy cannot take advantage of it. Akira lectured, feeling like Iruka sensei. What happened? Sakura whispered softly. Akira and Akito exchanged looks before Akira slowly nodded his head. I had a friend once. He betrayed many others and myself and when I tried to stop him, we fought. He used an attack his sensei taught him and pierced me just above my heart. Any lower and I would have been dead. It is still to this day a sore spot for me. Akira told his tale sadly, working off his cloak and shirt to show the Janans the scar his Sasuke had gifted him with, he made sure to hide his Anbu tattoo and the seal. That's horrible, Sakura gasped, covering her mouth. How could your friend do that to you? Naruto asked outraged, even Kakashi's visible eye was filled with anger. What do you think of it Sasuke? Akito asked the Uchiha sternly, the raven-haired Janan had his eyes trained on the scar with wide eyes. Why did your friend leave? Sasuke asked the redhead who was pulling his shirt and cloak back on. 
He wanted more power to avenge his fallen family and to kill the one who slaughtered them, Akira stated, staring down the Uchiha who shifted under the gaze. What happened to him? Sasuke asked, swallowing hard. There was a fight, he killed the one who he went to for power and managed to finally kill the one who killed his family. But in the end he fell into madness and became worse than the man he killed himself. In the end I was forced to kill him. People think they need power to achieve their goals, but in the end it will only bring their own demise, Akira said emotionlessly. A deafening silence followed those words. I hope that none of you will follow down that path. Akira cleared his throat, looking at each of them letting his eyes linger on Sasuke longer than the others. Well my story isn't as dramatic and heart-wrenching as my brother's. Akito spoke up, bringing the attention onto him to take the looks away from his brother who he knew needed the break. It happened during a battle, my best friend died protecting a fallen ally's body and the enemy used a jutsu that allowed him to use corpses like puppets and I had to fight off my best friend's dead body, leaving me with a scar from my right shoulder down to my left hip. Akito unlike Akira didn't remove his clothes knowing that if he did there was no way he could hide his onbu tattoo and other scars. That awful. Sakura covered her mouth, her eyes glassy. Naruto had his head down and fists clenched. Kakashi had his visible eye closed tightly and Sasuke wouldn't meet anyone's eyes. Enough of our sob stories. Now time for some training. We want you three to take turns sparring with each other and then we will go from there. Akira clapped his hands loudly to refocus the attention. Only weapons and taijutsus. The redhead twin stood with Kakashi while, Sakura and Naruto stepped up first and started to spar their best without using ninjutsus. When did they happen? Kakashi asked quietly eyeing the twins out of the corner of his eye while making it look like he was focused on his genons. Mine happened when I was 13, Akira said honestly. 16, Akito said shortly as he leaned against a nearby tree, he could see the start of Sakura's power. It was hidden, but it was there. He had been in the village to see her transformation and he knew what to look for. However the sooner Tsunade got to the village the better. 13. Only a year older than my kawaii genons. Kakashi muttered mainly to himself. Good fight you two. Akito pushed off his tree, walking towards the two genons. Naruto had taken Sakura down and the pink-haired girl looked annoyed and disappointed in herself. Sakura, you have rather impressive churka control and if you strengthen your taijutsu and then add in your churka you will become a force to be reckoned with. Akito told the only girl in the training field as he pulled out a scroll and handed it to her. Inside you will find taijutsu stances and the theory of how to incorporate your churka. I also think you should seriously consider learning medical ninjutsus as well, your churka control is perfect and I have a feeling you would excel in that. Wow, thank you Akito-sama. I will do my best and I will consider your words. Sakura looked pleased at his praise and his encouragement if not intrigued about his words about her excelling in medical ninjutsus. Now Naruto. I think Akira would be better suited to train you. He is a master in Kenjutsu and I bet you want to learn how to use your own katana. Akito jerked his chin at Raijin that Naruto had left by a nearby tree, unsure as how to use it. Come on Naruto, let's get training. Akira clapped his hands together and the blonde scurried over to the second redhead and the two went off a ways to train from the rest of the team. Sasuke I want you to spar against me. Akito called over and Raven Harajanan nodded. Sakura moved out of the way intently studying the scroll as she sat down by Kakashi. This isn't anything goes spar, show me your best, Akito stated as Sasuke dropped into a Nuchiha clan stance while the redhead just stood there. Begin. Kakashi called out and lifted up his Hitaye to view the battle with his Sharingan having a feeling he would need it as from the look in Akito's eyes the redhead was not going to go easy on the Uchiha. Sasuke rushed at Akito, kunai in hand and ready to strike. Akito brought up his hand and deflected the blow by twisting his wrist around the handle of the weapon and latching onto Sasuke's wrist and twisted it violently making the Janan drop the weapon. Sasuke tried to recover by giving the redhead a high kick with his right foot, Akito brought up his other arm and blocked the kick. Akito twisted his body and using his momentum and advantage of holding onto the raven-haired Janan's limb and tossed him across the clearing and into a tree trunk. Sasuke grunted as he made contact with the trunk and he staggered up onto his feet glaring at the redhead. Want to give up? Akito questioned with a smirk. Never. Sasuke grunted and quickly made hand signs. Katan, Hosen Kano Jutsu, Fire Style, Phoenix Flower Jutsu. Akito tensed and leapt up into the air, his cloak billowing out around him and he hovered in the air as the Katan Jutsu flew below him out of his range. Sasuke glared up at the hovering redhead and growled under his breath and wrapped his hand around his opposite wrist and it started to crackle with churka and the sound of birds chirping filled the air as Sasuke formed Chidori. 
he leapt up into the sky towards the redhead and extended his hand. Ration, Chidori, Sasuke cried out. Akito dropped down out of range, he moved underneath the attack and sank his fist into Sasuke's stomach. Sasuke coughed as his chirka faded out, Akito pushed more strength into his fist and used it to hit Sasuke down towards the ground. Akito stayed hovering in the air as he watched Sasuke created a small carter in the training ground below. Akito landed back on the ground and peered down into the carter to see Sasuke still conscious, but breathing heavily. Winner, Akito Kazama. Kakashi announced before he stood beside the redhead as Sasuke pulled himself out of the carter he created. The Uchiha hissed under his breath as he nursed his wounds as Akito stood by indifferently with Kakashi by his side. On the inside Akito was laughing, feeling happy that he finally got to beat up Sasuke. Good match bro. Akira sauntered over with Naruto and Do, both looking extremely pleased about something. I think we should break for lunch and then the teamwork training can begin. Sakura had tucked the scroll away and had joined their group, eyeing Sasuke worriedly as she had seen the fall he took. We should go to Ichiraku's. It has the best ramen ever. Naruto begged excitedly. Can we go Kakashi Sensei, can we? If Akira and Akito don't mind, Kakashi said slowly. No way, it's been ages since I've had good ramen and if it's as good as Naruto says then I have to try it, Akira said just as excitedly while Akito rolled his eyes as the blonde and redhead walked out of the training grounds towards a Jirakus, Sakura trailing behind them having a thinking face on while Akito walked beside Kakashi, Sasuke had just growled at them and went in the opposite way of the group. Does that happen a lot? Akira asked Kakashi quietly as the group enters Ichiraku's, Naruto telling Ayame and Tuchi about Akira and Akito and their training so far with he father-daughter pair smiling brightly at their favorite customer as he rambled on happily. More than it should. Kakashi admitted just as quietly as he settled in a seat next to Akira with Akito on his brother's other side. The subject was dropped as they ordered their ramen and Akito rolled his eyes as both Naruto and Akira dug into the food with gusto looking much like brothers. Sakura was eating her ramen, every so often whacking Naruto on the head telling him off for his bad manners while Kakashi just watched with happiness visible in his one eye. Ah, Naruto-kun, Sakura-chan, Kakashi-san, Iruka said pleasantly surprised as he entered the restaurant coming across the group. Iruka-sensei. Both Naruto and Sakura beamed at their old sensei while Kakashi's head snapped around to give the chunin an eye smile. Akira and Akito caught each other's eyes and smirked at the two senseis behind their backs. Ma, why don't you join us Iruka sensei Kakashi questioned pulling over an empty chair for the Chunin who blushed across his scar as he slid into the seat after glancing at the others at the table who nodded encouragingly. Arigato Kakashi-san. Iruka smiled at the silver-haired Jounin who slid back in his own seat. Ma, I told you to call me Kakashi. Kakashi scratched his hair. Um hum. Akira hummed lowly to Akito who smirked biting back a snort. Iruka sensei this is Akira and Akito Kazama. They helped us out during the invasion and are training us today, Naruto said excitedly, introducing the two redheads. It's nice to meet you I'm Iruka Umino, I was Naruto and Sakura's sensei back in the academy. Iruka inclined his head to the twins. Nice to meet you Iruka sensei. Akira smiled brightly at his older brother. Have you heard anything about the results of the Chunin exams? Iruka asked Kakashi and Naruto. Nothing yet, I believe Hokage-sama is going to make a decision when the aftermath is sorted out. Kakashi said stroking his mask chin. I really want to know if we just did all that fighting for nothing or not. Naruto complained and was whacked by his pink-haired teammate while both the Jounin shook their heads in amusement. Akira just patted Naruto on the shoulder in sympathy while Akito grinned at Sakura who smiled back feeling more confident around the two redhead ninjas. I'm sure the sun daime will tell people soon, don't worry too much about it kid. Akira patted Naruto on the head in a comforting way. The group spend the rest of the lunch break discussing random things, all the while Iruka and Kakashi exchanging looks with Akira and Akito Mving each time gaining a confused look from Naruto and a blush plus a giggle from Sakura as she was catching on to what was happening between the two senseis. With a fond farewell to Iruka the group headed back to the training ground to see Sasuke waiting there for them looking less grumpy than before and he gave Akito a small nod of acceptance and Akito sent one back. This was a good first step for Sasuke not defecting. Also having taken Orochimaru and Kabuto out was another pretty big step as well. Alright so now we are going to work on your teamwork. Akito, would you do the honors? Akira glances at his twin who nodded with a small smirk on his lips. With pleasure dear brother. Doton, Marrow, Earth Style, Labyrinth. Akito slammed both his hands onto the ground, 
a pulse was set out from his palms and the group watched as large slabs of rock and packed dirt rose up and formed an intricate pattern. Whoa, Naruto gasped as he craned his neck upwards to see the true height of the maze. This is your test, my brother and I are going to be inside the labyrinth. Your mission is to find us and we will be doing our best to evade you three. Akira explained the test, with nods to confirm they understood the red-headed twins floated up into the air and disappeared into the maze. Kakashi leapt up onto the tallest tree in the clearing to oversee his Janans. Once inside the maze the twins made cage bunshines and hedged into birds and flew back out just as Team 7 entered the maze. The two changed back to their human forms and settled down by the base of the tree Kakashi was perched on. He gave them an amused look before paying attention to his team. Akita leaned back, pillowing his head on his hands and closed his eyes ready for a nap. Akira crossed his legs and tried to focus on the nature around him. Five minutes into the test his eyebrow twitched as Jiraiya's Churka came closer to the training area. He opened his eyes and squinted at the white-haired Sanin who raised a hand in greeting to Kakashi. Jiraiya made his way over to where the twins were sitting and sat beside Akira. Afternoon Akira, Jiraiya said cheerfully. Jiraiya-sama, Akira said respectfully, it took a lot of effort not to call him Urosenin. So seer blood huh? Jiraiya said quietly watching the clouds gently move across the sky. Yes, I take it you have a question you wish to know an answer for? Akira eyed Jiraiya who looked nervous about the answer he was going to get for the question on his mind. I do. Jiraiya trailed off and Akira braced himself for a perverted question or something to do with Tsunade, what he got instead surprised him. Naruto. Does he make it? Jiraiya asked softly, Akira blinked he had not been expecting that. What do you mean? Akira said slowly, noticing that Akito shifted a bit to show he too was listening. You said there was a war coming. I don't care about myself, I just need to know if he makes it, Jiraiya said, eyeing the maze clearing tracking Naruto's Churka within it. He makes it, but you shouldn't be so careless with your own life. If you died he would be devastated and there would be a hole in his chest that would never fully heal, Akira said in a somber tone and Jiraiya seemed to take this in for consideration as he sat in silence for a while. Akira took a steadying breath as he closed his eyes and focused on his breathing. You're right, Jiraiya said after a while, the team's still not out of the maze yet. Naruto has been alone for his whole life and I refuse to leave him alone any longer. I will not die I will live. For my godson, Jiraiya said with conviction and Akira felt a genuine smile spread on his lips. Keep that in mind and what we have foreseen for your fate will never come to pass, Akira said sternly, placing his hand on Jiraiya's shoulder as the Toad Sage smiled at the redhead. I will, thank you. Jiraiya nodded his head seriously. Any other advice you have for me? Naruto is a good kid and he deserves a family, even if they are just stories. Akito spoke up with one eye opening slightly. I'm going to take Naruto with me to bring Tsunade back, I'm guessing that you already know this. I'll tell him some stories then I swear, Jiraiya said mostly to himself. Good and maybe if you give him a better name he won't call you Uro Senen anymore. Akito snickered at the eyebrow twitch the nickname got. That is a brilliant idea Akito. Jiraiya looked relieved by the mere idea of not having to be called that nickname any longer. He started to mutter new ideas for nicknames under his breath as the walls of the maze started to shake and shatter. It relieved all three members of Team 7 surrounding the cage bunshines of Akira and Akito, the two of which disappeared in a puff of smoke. Akira and Akito stood up as the exhausted, but pleased looking team approached them as Kakashi dropped down from the tree. Well, well. Akira placed his hands on his hips as he glared down the trio. Congrats. You found us together as team. Looks like you each learned something today. His face turned cheery and he beamed happily at the trio. Each Shinan brightened up at the words in the nod of approval Akito tacked onto the end of Akira's words and Kakashi giving them an eye smile. Hi Uro Senin. Naruto waved cheerfully at the Toad Sage whose eyebrow twitched as the muttering of new nickname ideas increased. Naruto, we are going to find a certain blonde tomorrow. So be packed and at the front gates at 8am Jirai ordered Naruto, patting the blonde Janan on his head while the blonde nodded his head in excitement. That's all we have for the day. Akira looked at Kakashi. Then training for today is done, now what do you say to Akira and Akito? Kakashi looked at his students. Arigato. Sakura and Naruto bowed respectfully while Sasuke gave his usual HN. But he did incline his head in respect. Well as much respect Sasuke gave anyone. Our pleasure. Akira assured the group. Come on Akira, I want to sleep before you force me to cook. Akito waved at the group of shinobi in front of them before grabbing Akira by the back of his cloak and dragged his twin off much to the amusement of the group. So I've been wrangled into training with Team 8 today while you were off bringing Lady Tsunade back. 
Shikamaru grumbled as he ran his fingers through a difficult knot in his black hair as he watched Naruto pack for the trip to the nearby town. Have fun with that, what was Akira's excuse for not being there? Naruto asked amused as he double-checked he had everything as he knew he was going to run in with Itachi Uchiha and Kisame Hoshigaki and would have to hold his own before Jiraiya showed up and he would have to protect Sasuke if he still showed up. He's helping out by covering Iruka Sensei in the mission room, apparently Iruka Sensei is unable to come in to work today and Kakashi already called off Team 7's training due to you being gone. I think we both know why Iruka Sensei isn't going into work today. Shikamaru finished with a knowing smirk while Naruto laughed loudly. Glad he's just a bunshine, but still, I have to deal with those memories later. Uck, mission room duty is the worst. Naruto complained as he tied his hitaiate around his forehead and looked at his new clothing that Jiraiya had sent for him late last night. Naruto had literally burned his orange jumpsuit in a ball of fire and did a little dance around the small bonfire, dragging Shikamaru along for the ride and it amused Chiyohime and Yoshino to no end. Naruto decided he would wait till he was 16 to get his normal outfit. In the meantime he was glad to be wearing a present from his godfather and no money came from his precious gamma wallet. Naruto was wearing standard black shinobi pants and sandals, del orange bandages were seen between the top of his sandals and the cuffs of his pants, his holster still on his usual leg and the bandages were still white. More orange bandages were wrapped around his wrists, he had a black short sleeve shirt underneath an orange sleeveless hooded jacket. His hitaiate was sewn onto black fabric and the ties were long just like they were in their future. Finally. The kill me orange jumpsuit is gone. Shikamaru smirked as he pulled his now not free hair up into his usual ponytail. I know right. I really like the bandages, I accidentally put some churka into them and they stabilized it so check this out. Naruto bounced on his heels excitedly as he threw his right arm up and Shikamaru watched with raised eyebrows as red orange churka chains flew out, the kunai and hitting the potted plant in the corner of the room. It then flew back up and wrapped around the bandages on Naruto's wrist before disappearing altogether. Yuruzumaki Churka Chains. You got them back, that's awesome and rather useful, Shikamaru said in a low voice. Do you think Jiraiya knows about the bandages and the chains? I think he may be leading up to it, I honestly have no idea what is going to happen on this trip to get Tsunade. I made sure to send a bunshine away from the village flaring its Churka so Itachi and Kisame will not come to the village to find me so they will not hurt Kakashi or anyone else. Also Sasuke may not come after us again as Itachi was never in the village to start with. Naruto ranted quietly while grabbing his backpack. Do you want me to back you up? Shikamaru questioned, worry in his voice. No, I'll be fine. I can handle Itachi and Kisame, even more so now. Naruto placed his hands on Shikamaru's shoulders looking his best friend dead in the eyes. You know I can handle myself and now that I have my chains back I can definitely deal with them now. Naruto gave a foxy smile and Shikamaru nodded slowly. If anything goes wrong. I don't give a hell about our covers and secrets. Grab Jiraiya and Hiraishin out of there and back to our safe point. Shikamaru ordered sternly. Hi Commander Sama, Naruto said cheekily before he ducked out of the way of Shikamaru's oncoming fist. Well I'm off. I'll be back with Uro Senen and Bachan soon. Naruto waved to Shikamaru as the blonde left the room to head to the front gates to meet Jiraiya. Shikamaru sighed as he fell back onto his bed and thought up a plan for teammate while fending off Kuranaya Nakamaru's nose. This was all way too troublesome for the Nara, but it was either that or he would have to sit around the compound and face his Dosan and Shogi again and for once he didn't want that. Delta slash Tilda where are you going Urosenin? Naruto looked up from his spot on one of the two beds in the inn the duo had stopped and on their way to find Tsunade. As he predicted Itachi and Kisame avoided Konoha altogether, the son Daime was alive and Orochimaru taken care of so there was no reason to remind people Itachi was still alive and watching and followed their trail instead and he didn't sense any of Sasuke's churka nearby so two things had changed so far. This however was a good thing and Naruto was more than ready to face the two Akatsuki members down alone as Jiraiya was off to do whatever he was doing before he came back to save his godson. I have something I need to take care of, stay here and you'll be fine Naruchan. Jiraiya ruffled the blonde hair fondly, remembering doing the same thing to Minato when he was this age. I'm going to kill Kakashi Sensei for this. Naruto grumbled. First Yoshino-chan and now Urosenin. Jiraiya just laughed as he retracted his hand. I will tell you all about Kakashi when he was your age, he was practically Minato's son so that makes him your Nissan. Jiraiya smirked at the very Kushina look Naruto got on his face and he swore that if Naruto had longer and red hair it would look just like hers did when she got mad or got a prank idea. He's so going to get it. Naruto grumbled before he tossed himself onto his bed, throwing his right forearm over his eyes. 
Don't be too long okay? I have a weird feeling about this place. I will, now get some sleep we will have a long day tomorrow. Jiraiya took Naruto's weird feeling into account before he patted Naruto's foot and left the room. Naruto sat up and crossed his legs, he focused and let two churka chains appear, both wrapped around his wrists and spread out in a circle around him. He sat like this for a good 10 minutes before, they started to tremble and jerk around. Naruto let them disappear and slid off the bed and readied himself as Itachi and Kisame were just down the hall from his room. Be ready, they have yet to get even one Jinchuriki as the others have listened to their bijus and were on high alert or have gone to kill or be don't give too much away. But don't let them catch you. Kurama reported to the blonde who was approaching the door now letting the chains disappear for the time being. I don't plan on it, if I can get Kisame out of the way I can tell Itachi I know the truth and maybe give him something to think about. He deserves to be able to live his own life back with Sasuke in the village if he wishes. Naruto thought back as he opened the door and leaned against the door frame and looked unimpressed at the two Akatsuki members who were only a few feet away. Is there a reason you two are following me? Naruto asked doing his best to sound bored. Naruto Uzumaki. Kisame intoned eyeing the blonde 12 year old unimpressed. Naruto eyed the blue skin and gills as he stared back with the same unimpressed look. That would be me, can I help you? Naruto asked eyeing Itachi with a knowing look. Come with us quietly or else you will get hurt. Kisame ordered and Naruto pushed off the doorframe and stood his ground. I don't think so. Naruto flicked his wrists and his chains flew out at a supersonic speed and wrapped themselves around Kisame tightly and pinned him to the opposite wall. Now be a good fishy and stay there while I talk with your partner. Kisame struggled against the churka chains, but to his dismay they tightened and started to absorb his churka instead as Itachi eyed the blonde interested. Damn Shikamaru was right, my chains are awesome, Naruto laughed before he started to use Anbu hand signs knowing Itachi would understand. I know the truth about the Uchiha slaughter and I know what you did to protect the village and Sasuke. I also know what you were planning for Sasuke when he gets strong enough, but know that it will not end well for him, the village or the world. Naruto signed and watched from the corner of his eye as Itachi took in the message and his eyes widened an inch before he signed back. Who told you this? I will explain everything in the near future just know that Jin Shuriki hunting and being part of the Akatsuki is not the way to bring peace to the world, something we both desperately want. Naruto finished signing just as the wall a few feet down from Itachi exploded and Jiraiya made his usual flashy entrance, but he stopped short when he saw Itachi just standing there and Kisame wrapped tightly in glowing red-orange churka chains coming from his godson. Did I miss something? Jiraiya dropped down next to his godson, making sure to stand between Naruto and Itachi. Nothing much really, but look at these wicked chains I just figured out how to use. Naruto grinned excitedly, and Jiraiya took in the glowing churka chains and the annoyed looking Kisame. Naruto, you just captured Kisame Hoshigaki one of the seven swordsmen of the mist and an Akatsuki member. Jiraiya kept one eye on Itachi, but the Uchiha didn't seem to even care about his captured teammate, he was just studying Naruto with an interested look on the visible part of his face. Uh huh. So what should we do with him? Naruto tilted his head to the side. It depends on Itachi Uchiha I guess. Jirai dropped into a fighting stance. Yo fishy I got a proposal for you. Naruto approached Kisame foregoing Jiraiya's calls to stay back and wary gazes he was shooting Itachi who was just standing by waiting to see what the Janan would do next. What do you want brat? Kisame growled, slouched against the wall he was pinned to by Naruto's chains. Do you agree with the plans the Akatsuki have or are you just hanging around because you like partnering with Itachi? Naruto questioned, consciously using his cage voice on the swordsman. May, being partners with Itachi is interesting and I've got nothing better to do, Kisame said honestly after a moment of thought. Thought as much, well my proposal is as follows fishy. Naruto pulled out a seal from his pack and held it up, ignoring the intake of breath from Jiraiya. What is that supposed to be? Kisame eyed it suspiciously. It's a seal genius. Naruto snorted and Kisame growled lowly. It is one that is used throughout Jiraiya's spy network, the proposal is this. You and Itachi stay in the Akatsuki and do what you want to do under their orders and if something big is being planned, use this seal and it will transfer the information to Jiraiya. Naruto left out the part about where it would come to him and Shikamaru first, but somatic. Just keep an eye on Itachi, make sure he doesn't overuse his eyes and doesn't fall ill, avoid Konoha and use the seal. That's all I'm asking here and in return I'll let you live. Naruto tightened the churka chains to prove his point. One more flick of my wrist and all your churka will be absorbed and your weak fishy body will be torn to shreds. So do we have a deal? The two stared each other down for a while before Kisame sighed. Fine you brat, we have a deal, 
Now get these damn chains off of me. Pleasure doing business with you Kisame. Naruto smirked and slapped the seal onto Kisame's upper arm and it sunk past the cloak and into his skin before turning the same color as Kisame's skin. Naruto turned to Itachi who silently pulled down his collar knowing Naruto was going to ask him the same thing and Naruto placed the seal on the Uchiha. Now off you go, just tell your boss that Jiraiya interfered. Naruto retracted his chains and Kisame slightly stumbled over to Itachi. Let's go. Itachi eyed Naruto once more who just waved cheerfully at his new informants as the two walked away leaving a pleased Naruto and a stunned Jiraiya in their wake. What was that? Jiraiya rounded on his blonde godson. I did say I had a weird feeling about this place Uro Senen. Was all Naruto said before he went back into the room and fell onto the bed, falling asleep as his 12 year old body wasn't used to upholding his chains for such a long period of time. Minato, Kushina you two made one interesting kid. Minato you would be proud of how he handled himself, like a true Hokage. Hell I'm proud if not confused. Jiraiya muttered as he leaned against the headboard of Naruto's bed and gently ran his fingers through Naruto's blonde hair as the Shinan slept on. Tilda slash Tilda Akido dangled his feet off the head of the Yondame Hokage as he waited for teammate to come back from their laps around the village. He had opted for different clothes this time around, less combat and more standard. He had his hair down for once. He wore black shinobi pants, sandals and long sleeve shirt with a green flak jacket unzipped over it. He had his katana and trench knives on him as he never went anywhere without them out of habit. He tried hard not to think about Naruto being out of the village with Jiraiya, as he knew his Hokage could handle himself, but he still felt uneasy for not being by his side. As he watched the village go on with its daily life he felt a rock settle in the pit of his stomach, his instincts telling him something rotten was growing and spread. He knew what that rottenness was, it was in the form of Donzo and Root, but he couldn't make a move just yet. He knew they needed backing from Tsunade and a good cause to go and kick Donzo's ass. He knew they had to stop the Akatsuki first before they could make any real progress on Donzo and hopefully rehabilitate his Root members including Sai. Sorry making you wait for us Akito-kun. Kurinai called his teammate and surprisingly Team 10 came puffing up, Shikamaru alongside Dino and Choji. It's fine. If I had known I was going to train two teams I would have dragged Akira out of the mission room. Akito smirked and Kura and I giggled. Sorry Akito-kun, I ran into Asuma and his team. Once they heard you were training us they wouldn't take no for an answer. Kura and I explained and Akito waved his hand dismissively. It's fine, this could work well actually. Akito hummed as he mentally rewrote the lesson plan to incorporate Team 10. Is it true Akito-san? Ino spoke up eyeing the redhead with a glint in her eye. One that Akito knew from being around the blonde for so long meant she was eyeing him up and making mental notes. That you defeated Sasuke-kun? I heard you punched him so hard that when he hit the ground he left a crater. Kiba snickered as Akamaru yipped before trotting over to Akito sniffing at him, his eyes darting over to Shikamaru his nose twitching. Akito knelt down and started to scratch Akamaru behind his ears just how he liked it. Akamaru licked his hand in understanding. Well, I won our spar if that is what you were asking. Akito said simply. Wicked. Kiba bared his fangs as he smiled, eyeing Akamaru who was almost purring as Akito scratched him. Alright so here is the lesson for today. I'm going to split you six into three teams of two. Ino and Shino, Hinata and Choji and finally Kiba, Akamaru, and Shikamaru. Akito stood up and said after getting nods from both Kurunai and Asuma explained the first part of his lesson plan. There was of course some outrage at the pairings. But they fell silent when Akito raised his right hand in front of him. Each pair is assigned some D rank missions for the day, your objective is to learn how to adapt and grow as a person and as a team as you never know when you will have to partner with someone unexpected, Akito said. Mentally he added that the Konoha 12 will become a flawless Anbu team in the future and wanted to push them down the right path early on. Akito handed each pair a few scrolls and sent them on their way. Do you have any reasoning behind the pairings Akito-kun? Kurinai asked as she and Asuma subconsciously flanked the redhead. Akito please, Akito said absently before he dropped back down into his previous spot overlooking the village and both the Jounin sat beside him. Kurinai and Asuma nodded at his words and waited in silence for him to continue. I do have some reasons behind the pairings. Shino is too withdrawn, Ino is the opposite and she seems to have a tendency to bring out someone's inner self while Shino will be able to keep her calm. Hinata and Choji both have the same self-confidence issues but have it in themselves to become stronger and flourish in their own ways. As they are paired up they will have to bring out their inner strength to finish the missions. Finally I put Kiba and Akamaru with Shikamaru because again they are opposites. 
Shikamaru is calm and collected while Kiba is hyper and impulsive, if anyone can calm Kiba down it is Shikamaru. Akito finished his explanation, noticing the stunned looks he was getting from the Jounins. That is very sound reasoning Akito. Asuma pulled out a cigarette and offered one to Akito who gladly took one. Kurinai was glaring harshly at the two and in the end the two had to put the cigarettes out or face her wrath. Akito smiled slightly bitterly at the scene he was taking part in, this is how it should have been in his future. This is going to happen in the future if he and Naruto had anything to say about it. Come on. Why won't you tell me? Jiraiya needled his godson as they walked into Danzaku town where Jiraiya heard Tsunade was located. I have to have some secret Suro Senin, Naruto said cheekily. Now are we going to find Tsunade or not? Yeah, yeah come on Brad I heard she is in a sake bar somewhere in this town. Jiraiya huffed, but was not done with this topic just yet. Naruto just smiled at the idea of meeting Bachan once again and maybe this time finally figuring out what family, connection they shared. The two wondered about, stopping to ask people every so often if they knew where she was and finally they approached the right bar. Okay Brad, I should go in first as she was my old teammate. Jirai looked down at the blonde Janan. I don't think so. I'm coming in with you. Naruto crossed his arms stubbornly. The two had a stare down before Jiraiya's shoulders slumped as he blew out a puff of air. Fine, just let me do the talking alright? Jirai relented, he was figuring out he could never say no to his godson and those damn blue eyes of his. Naruto beamed and hid behind Jiraiya as they entered the sake bar. Long time Hatsunade? Jiraiya asked the blonde sitting at the bar as he sat beside her, Naruto spotted Shizun holding Tantan beside Tsunade looking lost at her master's drinking. What do you want? Tsunade slurred annoyed at seeing Jiraiya. I've come to bring you back to Konoha, Jiraiya said honestly. I'm never going back, get out of here you perv, you are killing my buzz. Tsunade waved her arm like she was shooing a bug. She even agrees that you are in pervero senin. Naruto snickered as he poked his head around Jiraiya's arm and Tsunade looked at him, shock in her eyes before she huffed and turned away. Who's the brat? Tsunade asked, trying to sound uninterested. Naruto Uzumaki Nami Kaze, your great nephew, Jiraiya said in a low voice and both blondes startled. Oh so she's my great aunt. Naruto thought amazed. I guess your nickname for her is closer to the truth than you thought, Kurama agreed. Should I shock her? Naruto questioned. Couldn't hurt, she needs to sober up and give us some answers. Kurama grunted. She's my great aunt huh? Well I've got a bone to pick with her then. Naruto growled and flicked his wrists. The drunk Sanin let out a surprised shout as red orange chains wrapped around the blonde pulling her off of her stool. We are going to have a little talk Bachan. Naruto said cheerfully as he walked out of the bar pulling Tsunade behind him, Shizun, Tantan and Jiraiya following. The latter was shaking his head amused while Shizun hugged Tantan tighter as they ended up a in a small clearing where in the previous timeline Naruto had stayed there for a solid week learning the Rasengan. Naruto released his chains and watched Tsunade, now sober, get to her feet with rage in her eyes. You have no reason to be mad Bachan, Naruto said calmly. Don't call me that brat, Tsunade asked but there was an edge of playfulness in her voice. Yeah, yeah okay Bachan. Listen. I need to know. Are you really my great aunt? Naruto swallowed hard to remove the lump that was lodged in his throat. Yes on your mother's side. Tsunade admitted and was taken by surprise when she was suddenly on the ground. She had been tackled by Naruto who had his 12 year old arms wrapped around her waist and face buried in her large chest. She blinked as she felt a wetness form there and Naruto's body shudder every so often. She blinked again as she understood that he was sobbing silently. She looked up at Jiraiya who knelt down by her head. He has been alone and treated as an outcast and a demon by the whole village. He thought he was alone in the world, you should have seen him when he found out I was his godfather. Punched me hard enough to think you had been training him and then hugged me so tight I thought I couldn't breath. Jiraiya explained softly. You weren't in the village looking after him? Tsunade asked surprised and angry at the treatment her great nephew had been put through. No, I thought you were. Donzo and the elders convinced me to leave him in your care and go work on my spy network. Jiraiya's voice was one of concealed anger and Tsunade felt her arms tightening around Naruto of their own will. They told me you were looking after him as his godfather, that's why I left without him. Tsunade growled. It doesn't matter anymore. Naruto announced as he looked up from where he was hugging his great aunt. All that matters is none of us are going to be alone ever again. This gained smiles from all the adults present before Naruto burrowed his way back into the hug he was giving Tsunade. Why did you come now? Tsunade eyed Jiraiya. What happened? During the Chunin exam Zorochimaru tried to invade Konoha and kill Sensei, 
Jiraiya said bluntly and Tsunade's eyes widened before they narrowed. What happened? Well first off he tried to take Sasuke Uchiha during the round in the forest of death, but Naruto here and his best friend Shikamaru Naira fought him off, Jiraiya said proudly. Tsunade looked down at the blonde in surprise, but all she got was a foxy grin from the Janan. Jiraiya went on to explain about Akira and Akito Kazama, how Orochimaru was finally killed, sealed and the village was safe. He explained about what Akira and Akito saw and that the son Daime wanted her to become god I'm. Tsunade snorted at the final thought and then flat out refused to become the new Hokage. I'll make you a bet Bachan. Naruto spoke up after internally panicking for a moment. A bet? Tsunade looked at the blonde who was now sitting beside her on the ground instead of pinning her down with a hug. If I can't surprise you in the next 5 minutes, you win and you don't have to become god I'm. Naruto smiled. And if you win I'll come back and become god I'm, hell I'll even throw my necklace in. Tsunade said with a smirk, knowing that there was no way she could lose. The two shook on it and Naruto jumped to his feet. Prepare to be amazed, Naruto shouted and made a cage bunshine and together they easily created the Rasengan in the palm of Naruto's hand. He left as he took in the utterly surprised and shocked faces of Tsunade, Shizune, Tantan, and Jiraiya. Rasengan, Naruto shouted as he slammed it into a nearby tree, sending it flying into numerous others before shattering. How did you know that jutsu? I never mentioned it or trained you in how to use it. Jiraiya gapped and Tsunade sat there speechless. Well if I'm going to take after my Tosan I figured I should know how to use one of his famous jutsus ne? I'm going to be the orange Hokage one day after all, Dadabayo. Naruto gave a peace sign and tensed as Tsunade walked over to him. She pulled him into a hug and clipped the Shodai's necklace around the blonde's neck, returning it to its rightful place, she didn't know that mind you, and kissed him on the forehead. Damn. Looks like I'm becoming god I'm brat. Tsunade huffed before she got an armful of blonde Janan once again. We can all be a family Bachan, Naruto laughed happily, truly happy his strange family was coming together again and he was determined to keep it together this time. Even if he and Shikamaru had to fight the war on their own he would keep them safe this time around. Alright, alright brat. Shizune. Tsunade pried Naruto off her as she looked over at the woman. Hi? Shizune asked, snapping to attention. If I'm going to be god I'm I'm going to need a personal advisor. I hope you weren't planning on doing any more traveling because we are going home. Tsunade smirked and Shizune grinned happily back. Yes, let's go home Lady Tsunade, Shizune agreed. Speaking off. Bachan I have the perfect new apprentice for you. Naruto trailed off as the group headed towards the gates of the town. I'm already regretting this. Tsunade grumbled as Jiraiya snickered, but casted a look at the rambling blonde who was talking happily to his newly discovered family member. Naruto was just layer after layer of secrets and skills and Jiraiya had a feeling that him and Shikamaru Nara were not as they seemed and something else happened in the forest of death that they weren't telling anyone. Jiraiya was going to find out even if it took him the rest of his life. Tilda slash Tilda it's been a while Tsunade. Hiruzen puffed his pipe as he looked at the people gathered in his office, Tsunade, Shizune, Tantan, Jiraiya, and Naruto. It has sensei, Tsunade said respectfully to the Sandaime. I assume that you have been briefed of events that have happened here as of late? Hiruzen questioned, Tsunade nodded. I know you Tsunade, why did you agree to become god I'm? I lost a bet to the brat of a great nephew. Tsunade jerked a thumb over at Naruto who waved before he fell onto a nearby couch and closed his eyes to rest. You're not kidding, Hiruzen laughed at the put out look Tsunade was sporting. What did he do? Secret Gigi. Naruto sank from his place on the couch where Tantan was now resting on his stomach comfortably. What the brat said, Tsunade agreed, figuring that if Naruto wanted to keep knowing the Rasengan to himself he had a good reason. I summoned Akira and Akito. Kazama here to talk with you if that is alright. The Sundaime stated as someone knocked on the door and Tsunade nodded just in time for Akira and Akito to walk in. Akira. Naruto called out, Akira ruffled the blonde's hair. Welcome back Kit, lucky you got to leave the village. I was stuck in the mission room because Kakashi had to go out with Iruka last night. Akira huffed and Akito smothered a snort. Sakura owes me ramen, she said they weren't together, Naruto said smugly while the Sandaime coughed, covering his own laughter. Asari Hokage-sama. Akira rubbed his neck sheepishly. Akira, Akito Kazama, meet Tsunade and Shizune. Hiruzen gestured to the newcomers. I'm Akira, he's Akito. Nice to meet get both. Akira jerked his thumb at this twin who bowed respectfully. So you two are the red demon twins with the seer blood. Tsunade inspected the redhead twins critically. 
Any advice you care to share? Things will get better before they get worse, Akito said cryptically. I can guarantee you that your head will look great on the mountainside, Akira said cheerfully causing Naruto to snicker from his place on the couch. Is that it? Tsunade looked unimpressed. Sasuke Uchiha. Akito spoke up sharply. We have seen the true story when Itachi told his little brother before Sasuke killed him. Okay Toby told Sasuke a version of the truth, but they couldn't bring him up just yet or the fact that he got the whole Uchiha history from the four previous Hokages. Silence covered the office and Naruto didn't react knowing where Akito was going with this. He defected from the village to join Orochimaru, but as the snake is dead he will not defect to join Otto this time around. However he yearns for power to kill his brother, there is a way to prevent two pointless deaths. Tell Sasuke Uchiha the complete truth about what truly happened to his clan, to his brother and train him more intensely so he can defend himself against his brother if the time comes that Itachi forces Sasuke to kill him in battle, Akito said gravely. We know you cannot tell him as on Daime, however once the god Daim takes over no one can stop you from visiting the Uchiha compound and telling him the whole truth under the guise of a visit to see how the last Uchiha is holding up. Akira added in seeing Haruzin's mouth open to protest. If what you say is true, he should know the truth about his clan. I was going to tell him, just I was going to wait until he was older. It seemed that in that alternate timeline I did not have the chance, I will tell him once I named Tsunade God Daim. Hiruzen agreed looking every bit the old soul he was. Lady Tsunade you don't need much help, just. Watch the elders on the council, they have plans that will not be beneficial to anyone expect themselves. Akira warned seriously. You are talking about Donzo? Hiruzen leaned forward with a look of disbelief on his face. Yes, as, God I'm you need to keep a strong stance against him and his supporters. Follow your instincts and advice of only those you trust completely, Akito sighed warily thinking about Sai root in the Uchiha slaughter and who knows how far Donzo's destructive reach stretched. I will. Tsunade swore. I never did like Donzo anyways. She grumbled and Tauntaun made a snort of agreement. He was part of the group that lied to both of us about the care of Naruto, Jiraiya hissed. Akira and Akito exchanged looks and bowed to both Tsunade and Hiruzen before silently leaving the office knowing that where this conversation was going and they figured it should be done in private. Not like Naruto wasn't going to tell Shikamaru slash Akito later that night, but it was courtesy. What do you mean? Hiruzen asked confused. Shouldn't Kakashi sensei be here before we get into this? Naruto called over. The brat's right, bring in Hatake, Tsunade agreed and Hiruzen nodded sharply to the corner of the room and Tenzo shushined away to gather his old onbu captain. Moments passed and soon Kakashi and Tenzo shushined into the office. Kakashi eyed everyone in the room and out of reflex moved closer to Naruto on the couch before he nodded to the others in the room. Please explain Jiraiya, Tsunade. Hiruzen turned to his students. After. That night, I went to find Naruto, Minato, and Kushina, however Donzo, Homer and Mitokato and Kohari Yudatana pulled me away from my search. I was told that Minato and Kushina were dead and the Nine Tails was sealed inside the Naruto. They then told me that he was placed in the care of Tsunade and I needed to go and work on my spy network. Believing them I agreed and left the village thinking that Naruto was with family and Kakashi would be there as well. Jiraiya explained his side of the story with anger in his eyes. Naruto was sitting up with Tauntaun in his lap as he watched and listened carefully feeling his own anger building up in his gut. My story is the same as Jiraiya's, but they told me Jiraiya was looking after Naruto as he is his godfather so I took Shizune and left, Tsunade agreed her fists clenching and unclenching. After that night I was unstable and Donzo suggested that I should join the Yonbu to learn to control my emotions, I questioned about Naruto he assured me he was being taken care of. I looked for him when I had time off, but it seemed like he dropped off the map. I didn't find out what was truly happening to him until he reached the academy and saw how skinny and pale he was so I left him small gifts and some food. I then put in my registration from the Anbu and requested to become his Jounin Sensei and it was approved by Hokage-sama. Kakashi explained as part of the story. So you are saying that I could have had a real family, but Donzo and his damn council were the reason I had a horrible, abusive and lonely childhood? Naruto asked, pupils slitting like a fox and his whiskers darkening. Naruto, calm down, Kurama shouted at the blonde whose anger and Churka was rising up. It's his fault, Naruto hissed not listening to the bijou. Kurama growled and soon Naruto was crouched in ankle deep water outside the open cage where Kurama was waiting. What are we doing here? I am going to murder Donzo and be done with him once and for all, Naruto shouted, voice echoing around the sewer. You need to calm down brat, 
If you keep going on like this you will expose how powerful you are and then everything will be utterly screwed. Kurama shouted back as he wrapped one of his tails around the blonde protectively and soothingly and held on until Naruto calmed down and the mindscape changed around him. It turned into a large open and forested area with white clouds and blue sky. Kurama sighed in relief and unfurled his tail only for Naruto to cling to the fluffy limb and sighed happily. Thanks Kurama. I really needed that. Naruto smiled before he left his mindscape to see Kakashi and Jiraiya's faces looking down at him worried and a hand on his forehead belonging to Tsunade. Are you with us now Naruto-chan? Kakashi asked. Yeah, sorry. What happened? Naruto asked as Tsunade and Jiraiya helped him sit up. You were getting angry then you just fell forward. Tsunade reported checking his pupils. Good thing Kakashi was there or else you would have face planted. Thanks Kakashi Nisan. Naruto smiled at the Jounin who sat back in shock at the nickname. One nickname deserves another after all. What happened, you aren't showing any signs of dulled senses that come with fainting. Tsunade asked suspiciously. Tell them I brought you to see me and try not to make me out to be a psychotic beast alright? Kurama ordered. Gotcha fuzzball. Naruto mentally saluted the Nine Tails. Well Kurama, that's the Nine Tails, brought me into our mindscape and told me to calm down because he could feel his churka starting to leak out and he didn't want to go on another rampage, Naruto said simply and had to bite back a laugh at the sudden silence and stillness the room at the admission. Why didn't you tell me about this when I was checking your seal? Jiraiya asked grabbing Naruto by the shoulders worry on his face. Because he was always there for me during the tough times and he isn't as evil as everyone makes him out to be, Naruto said calmly. He helps me out and teaches me things and he is my friend. Let me get this straight. You somehow managed to befriend the nine-tailed beast and he isn't a raging monster? Jiraiya asked this amazed. They aren't all bad, they are quite peaceful apparently and only go out of control when they are controlled, Naruto said simply before he yawned widely. Can we talk about this later, I'm exhausted. Of course Naruto, Tsunade the sensuous state is yours now. Hiruzen spoke up in his grandfatherly way. Thanks sensei, come on Naruto. Let's go home. Tsunade helped Naruto up. What are you talking about? Naruto looked up at his aunt. Jiraiya told me about that shithole you call an apartment, as we are family you are coming to live with me now. Tsunade grabbed the hood of Naruto's hoodie and started to drag him out. I'll let Shikaku-san and Yoshino-chan know where you are. Kakashi called out as the two blondes left the office with Shizune, Tantan and Jiraiya following behind. Thanks Nisan. Naruto shouted back before Kakashi bowed to the Sandaime and shushined away. Tilde slash tilde woe. This place is massive. Naruto spun around inside the grand foyer of the Senju estate where Tsunade insisted he, Jiraiya and Shizune live with her. Naruto forgot how terrifying she could be when she wanted something to go her way. Glad you approve. Tsunade sounded amused before motioning the preteen to follow her. Where are we going Bachan? Naruto asked interested, she had already had given them the tour. This is some place only someone with Uzumaki blood can enter, Mito my grandmother and first Jean Chiriki of the Nine Tails created it. Tsunade glanced over her shoulder as the two went down a spiral staircase and ended up by a huge round stone door with a blood red seal drawn on it. Place your hand in the outline. Tsunade gestured to the door, Naruto nodded and placed his hand on the hand outline in the middle of the door and watched with bated breath as the seal lit up in QB red before the door swung open with an ominous creak. Using one hand Tsunade pushed open the door and the two stepped inside to see a huge library covered in dust and portraits lining the stone walls. Wow, this place is amazing. Naruto swallowed. I have a clan and I can finally learn about their history. Once you are of age you will inherit the Namikaze estate and there you will find out everything about your father's clan. Tsunade added to Naruto's statement and smiled as the blonde's eyes lit up. We can dig into the Uzumaki and Senji history another day, right now you need to get some rest. Don't think I didn't notice you were awake all night keeping watch. Ah, okay Bachan. Naruto rubbed his head sheepishly and followed his aunt out of the Uzumaki library, the stone door shutting behind them and back up to the main mansion and then up to the second floor where Tsunade gave him a room that was the bigger than his old apartment and was beautifully decorated in fact it looked like it had been made just for him. But Tsunade said it was his mother's old room as she was part of the Senju family as well. We are all just down the hall in case you need anything. Good night brat. Tsunade kissed his forehead before she left, closing the door leaving Naruto to his new room. Naruto decided he would explore the next day with Shikamaru as he searched through the closet and with an aha pulled out a pair of black sleep pants and a green t-shirt that had the Uzumaki clan, swirl and Senju clan symbol on the shirt sleeves. He slid those on and tossed himself onto the bed, sighing happily as he sunk into the soft mattress and fluffy sheet, 
He burrowed his way into the fabric and almost was lulled to sleep when the door opening woke him. He decided to keep his eyes shut as they felt like lead and he wasn't sure he could open them anyways. Good night Naruchan, Jiraiya whispered as he slid something onto Naruto's head and something soft into his arms that tightened around the item out of reflex. He heard the door shut and he, with great effort, peered at his arms and smiled to see a small stuffed version of Gamabande in his arms and his hippo hat from Kakashi on his head. Naruto sighed happily as he buried his face into the soft stuffed frog, he finally had a family that truly cared about him. He couldn't wait to tell Shikamaru tomorrow and introduce him to his family as Shikamaru was and always will be his brother. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.